It is our healing that matters, not the leprosy. Looking at people with a healed eye, an attitude of a healing inside of me, that's what the church is called for a reflection. God, in his mercy, will give us a spiritual priority. The gospel portion <laughs> was very, very plain. And the gentleman was asking Jesus, saying, if, if you are willing, I'll be healed. That's all. The narration is very brief. Jesus said, I'm willing, be healed. And he's healed. The situation today is the healing is not for a patient. It is for our own sight, our own way of looking at things, our perspectives, our way of reflecting things. God would give us a honest assessment of stock of things that are happening in our life. That's the first portion. If we do honestly an assessment today, not just for our own personal life, it's wonderful, doing it for ourselves, doing it for our families, as a community of God, the church, church here, church at large, and as a nation, nation of India, oh God, idolatrous nations. Can I say that? Is it it's too... <laughs> Uh, narrow to say this on the day of 22nd January the country and the political knock had gathered together to show forth their muscle on a grabbed sight of a mask and felt proud of doing it the criminal announcement is still pending on those people who have pulled down the mask. Uh, am I exaggerating? That's a true reflection of the nation today. And the pol political bunch supposed to be very prestigious officers of our country had indulged in, in an idolatrous preoccupation of this nation. On that day, the whole world wide was praying for India. We were about 150 people online with the international communities, very concerned about India. And there was a lady from Australia praying of sovereignty. I opened up my eyes, went into the uh, list, and the face was familiar. We walked with her. And it was Stanley uh, Staines Graham's wife, Gladys. She was praying for sovereignty to be established in India. We've been grieved on that night. It's 24 years of cruelty in India for a person who served for leprosy. I have, I have witnessed them in the villages in Manoharpur and other places. In the very same district, they picked up our Rashtrapati, the president of our country, and put her there, and they carefully covered her not to come into the inauguration of this Ram temple. What a shuttle way with which the untouchability is practiced up and down, right and left. It is in this country, on a very crucial moment of our history, that we as a church is called to think something marvelous in the Lenten season. God is calling us to a time of repentance. Is it not a wonderful time to go? Knock down, kneel down, and make our petitions unto the Lord. What do we do in the petitions of the Lenten season? Confront our own inadequacies. Book of Joel is talking about this in the second chapter. 12 and 13 verses, rend your heart. Very powerful invitation. <laughs> now it is in this, in this chapter, 
the history of church was visualized. When the, when the nation need to change and repent, when that's happening, he was prophesying in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all men. You will see vision. And that's being realized in the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles. That is the day in which the church was born. So the church is built on the basis of repentance, fasting, and praying. Giving up things, giving up the tithe and beyond. And a very special way of giving, alms giving. Again, Pope Francis, he sent it out, and uh, this has been in circulation in the, in the social media very, very fast. Fast from hurting the words. Not just that routine of uh, tradition, but being kind. Fast from sadness and to be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and to be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism <laughs> and to be looking at, you know, in the election year, election season, not even a year, just about a couple of months, looking with some way with which that God will make a breakthrough, a, 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 a hope. Fast from worries, worries of health, wealth, <laughs> issues of life, relationship, Pope is saying to be filled with trust in God in all of our needs. First from complaints to be filled with contemplating simplicity of life. First from pressures to be filled with prayerful life. First from bitterness and to fill with hearts of joy in spirituality. First from selfishness and to be compassionate with less privileged. First from grudges and to be reconciled with God and to be immensely satisfied of things that God has provided us. And first from words and to be silent so that you can keep listening God. Confront the inadequacies is a first step. And then rend your heart. And that leads us for a wholehearted devotion to turn to God. When you turn around in the modern, te modern management technology, they say 360 degree of turning around. 40 days is a big time. Seven weeks is a long time. 40 Days and 40 nights, amazing time that we will indulge in praying, silencing ourselves, get involved in confronting with ourselves and our situations around and wholeheartedly with the devotion that Jesus didn't come to condemn a country, condemn certain group of people, but they are candidates they are candidates of the kingdom, so pray for them, save them. The power of repentance and grace to redeem upon the political notch and every level of our people who would turn around. And if you turn around, finally, God is calling us for a journey of renewal. 40 days is a wonderful time to turn ourselves to gaze upon the cross of Christ. And already we started picking up the theme, and we will consider recommit ourselves, not just an emotional individual, but as a person with uh, leadership, with the discipleship, with the content of a different way of looking at things in life, and be reconciled. We were in Calcutta. We were sent as missionaries with uh, the French missionary weapon, and it was on Ash Wednesday. Everything around was so gloomy. 
we thought we will do something usually that we are not doing, we should think of. So we spent the whole day and the evening, simple people, tribal uh, girls and my tribal friends and others, other pastors were around and we said, the deity, the, the darkness of the Kali deity is heavy, heavy on Calcutta and it is influential all over the region and across the nation. We should do something. And we sat and we decided that if we start on a Ash Wednesday and go on until the Maundy Thursday, about 46 days, we counted 1,000 hours. We decided that we will fast and pray, invite other believers across, all the churches across, and invite for national concerns of our time. Over 10, 15 years now, several thousand hours have been conducted from the church as a rallying point for the nation. It's possible. I would call this as a process of renewal, the way that God has called us. The epistle that was read to us is from the book of Hebrew. It's a consolidation of all the great teaching of the book, the epistle <laughs> Hebrew, and he picked up very important encouragement and exhortations. And in the exhortation, the, the epistle writer is saying, you should listen to your elders. <laughs> you should look at the history, the custom, the tradition that your forefathers and foremothers have created it. You know, in the book of Nama, in, the, in Second Kings, Naaman was finally saying, I'm killed. I want to go return and see the man of God and announce there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Oh, that's the predicament with which the whole church needs to journey on in the renewal. For my personal reflection on ministry, I was reading the book of Daniel for, uh, for my own purpose. I was reading the sixth chapter. Daniel was a young boy in this first and second chapter, and later in the seventh and eighth chapter, he's become a very elderly, very effective person of a leader in the nation. Four dogmatic era of the church with uh, Babylon, then Syria, then into the Gentile land, he was able to not just survive, thriving on. The secret is that he prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom, each day, three times of the time. It was an idolatry situation. The king that he is serving Command him to come and serve by the declaration that has been made cunningly against him and his friends. But he said, no, I will not be able to do it. As usual. This Lenten is not an as usual Lenten. For India, it is an unusual Lenten. Preparing our nation for the continuity of democracy. And the freedom with which that we, the church, will enjoy ministering to Kandamal. The situations in Manipur will continue to serve God without any kind of a, a iota of interest in us. And finally, Daniel, we need to look at it, and he said in the sixth chapter later part, I make a degree that every dom dominion of my kingdom Men must tremble and fear before God of Daniel. This was so oh, amazing. The king's announcement. And he said, his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues us. He works signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of lions will save India. Save Christians. Save the poor, save the marginalized, save the people who have been pushed away as untouchable. That's the power with which God in his mercy 
is calling us to renew our faith. Shall we look to him for his grace? That way. Let's see. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, it is in this very hour of beginning of the Lent, we pray that you will give us the enormous grace of joyful living. A journey with which that you have called us to be a people free from every crutches of life. Come, minister to us, starting from this Sunday, all through seven Sundays, 40 days and 40 nights, thousand hours of godly living for a true reflection and to rend our heart for repentance, not only for our own personal inadequacies, O oh God, for a community, our generation, and a nation like India to look to you for your encounters and make us renewed. Make me renewed, amazingly touched, and to journey together for wholeness, healing, and your reformation, and for a transformed situations of godliness in the country. Come, continue to minister to us in India. And Indians all over the world and our generations across the world. In Jesus' most precious name, we humbly pray. Amen.